An Inquiry by Anton Chekhov. It was midday. Voldarev, a tall, thick-set country gentleman with a crop head and prominent eyes, took off his overcoat, mopped his brow with his silk handkerchief and, somewhat diffidently, went into the government office. There they were, scratching away. Where can I make an inquiry here, he said, addressing a porter, who was bringing a tray full of glasses from the farthest recesses of the office. I have to make an inquiry here, and to take a copy of a resolution to the council. That way, please, to that one sitting near the window, said the porter, indicating with the tray the furthest window. Voldorev coughed and went towards the window. There, in a green table, spotted like typhus, was sitting a young man with his hair standing up in four tufts on his head, with a long, pimply nose and a long, faded uniform. He was writing, thrusting his long nose into the papers. A fly was walking around near his right nostril, and he was continually stretching out his lower lip and blowing under his nose, which gave his face an extremely careworn expression. May I make an inquiry about my case here, uh, of you? My name is Voldorev, and by the way, I have to take a copy of the resolution to the council of the 2nd of March. The clerk dipped his pen in the ink and looked to see if he had got too much on it, having satisfied himself that the pen would not make a blot. He began scribbling away. His lip was thrust out, but it was no longer necessary to blow. The fly had settled on his ear. Can I make an inquiry here? Voldorev repeated a minute later. My name is Voldorev. I am a landowner. Ivan Alexeyevich! The clerk shouted into the air as though he had not observed Voldorev. Will you tell the merchant Yalikov when he comes to sign the copy of the complaint lodged with the police? I've told him a thousand times. I've come in reference to my lawsuit with the heirs of Princess Gugulin, muttered Voldorev. The case is well known. I earnestly beg you to attend to me. Still failing to observe Voldorev, the clerk caught the fly on his lip, looked at it attentively and flung it away. The country gentleman coughed and blew his nose loudly on his checked pocket handkerchief. But this was no use either. He was still unheard. The silence lasted for two minutes. Voldorev took a ruble note from his pocket and laid it on an open book before the clerk. The clerk wrinkled up his forehead, drew the book towards him with an anxious air, and closed it. A little inquiry. I want only to find out what grounds the heirs of Princess Gugli... May I trouble you? The clerk, absorbed in his own thoughts, got up and, scratching his elbow, went to the cupboard for something. Returning a minute later to the table, he became absorbed in the book again. Another ruble note was laying upon it. I will trouble you for one minute only. I have only to make an inquiry. The clerk did not hear. He had begun copying something. Voldorev frowned and looked hopelessly at the whole scribbling brotherhood. They write, he thought, sighing. They write, the devil take them entirely. He walked away from the table and stopped in the middle of the room, his hands hanging hopelessly at his sides. The porter, passing again with glasses, probably noticed the helpless expression of his face, for he went up close to him and asked him in a low voice, well, have you inquired? I have inquired. I've inquired, but he wouldn't speak to me. You give him three rubles, whispered the porter. I have given him two already. Give him another. Voldorev went back to the table and laid a green note on the open book. The clerk drew the book towards him again and began turning over the leaves, and all at once, as though by chance, 
lifted his eyes to Voldorev. His nose began to shine, turned red, and wrinkled up in a grin. Ah, what do you want? he asked. I want to make an inquiry in reference to my case. My name is Voldorev. With pleasure. The googling case, isn't it? Very good. What is it then, exactly? Voldorev explained his business. The clerk became as lively as though he were whirled round by a hurricane. He gave the necessary information, arranged for a copy to be made, gave the petitioner a chair, and all in one instant. He even spoke about the weather and asked about the harvest. And when Voldorev went away, he accompanied him down the stairs, smiling affably and respectfully, and looking as though he were ready any minute to fall on his face before the gentleman. Voldorev, for some reason, felt uncomfortable. And in obedience to some inward impulse, he took a ruble out of his pocket and gave it to the clerk. And the latter kept bowing and smiling and took the ruble like a conjurer, so that it seemed to flash through the air. Well, what people, thought the country gentleman, as he went out into the street and he stopped and mopped his brow with his handkerchief. <laughs>